Hey guys, this is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to create paper texture in Adobe Photoshop. Yeah. Now, let me introduce to y'all the one son of a musician refused to fall. So this is the texture that we're gonna be creating, and I have it kind of, the, all the settings sort of cranked up to high so that you guys can kind of see it. But you can see sort of the grittiness there. There's a few filters that we have on that affect a couple of different things. Um, we also have the ability to change the color. Uh, we can just adjust that very, very simply to any color we want, really, uh, so that you can also create colored paper. I'm gonna first go up to File, New, and we're gonna select a 1920 by 1080 document at 72 DPI in RGB color mode. It is important that it's an RGB, I believe. Some of these filters will require, require you to be an RGB, um, but you can always convert to CMYK later. So we'll create that document. We wanna start by creating a rectangle that covers our entire space. So over here in your tool panel, there's the rectangle tool. You click on that, also shortcut key U, and just click and drag over the top of the entire canvas. Make sure you cover all the edges. That's gonna create a rectangle. We had the fill set as black. It also may open up the properties panel here, and we can select the fill here or here to adjust it. We're gonna change that to be a 2% uh, white, so just barely gray. If I look at this lab color or this HSB, I can just change that to 98, either one of those, the L or the B, um, and that's gonna give me like about that 2% gray. I'm gonna hit okay. We're 2% black, which makes it gray. It's almost white, it's very close to white. The reason we're not going straight white is because we need a little bit of leeway to pull some of those highlights in to actually see the texture. So we've got this rectangle, cr rectangle created. And I'm gonna go ahead and double click on my background layer. It's gonna create a new layer from it, hit okay. And I'm gonna delete that with the delete key or I can just drag it down to the trash. So with this rectangle tool, the first thing we wanna do with it is actually right click it and go to convert to smart object. We can also go up to filter and say convert for smart filters. That'll do the same thing. So I'm gonna hit convert for smart filters. What that does is it basically creates, it's creating a smart object and a smart object houses almost like another Photoshop document, really it is. So if I double click on the thumbnail here, it'll take me to another Photoshop document. You can see up in my document tabs here, we have the original one, we have the one that uh, we're working on and then it opened up this rectangle11.psb document. And that is where the actual rectangle lives that we just created. And if I wanted to, I could double click on that and adjust its color here, but we're actually just gonna leave this be. I just wanted to show you what we did with the smart object. So I'm gonna exit out of this and don't save it. So we have that 98% um, white, 2% black rectangle sitting, sitting there in that smart object. And what we're gonna do is apply a bunch of filters to the top of this guy. So the first thing I'm gonna apply is I'm, I'm just gonna apply a layer style to it uh, called color overlay. So I'm gonna double click in this gray area of my layer. And that brings up the layer style panel. We can do all sorts of things here, adding drop shadows and inner shadows, outer glows, strokes, things like that. All I'm gonna add is a color overlay. It's about three quarters of the way down probably. And that's gonna add more than likely a black or a white for you and it will maybe be on multiply, but could be on normal. We're gonna switch that to multiply, and then the color, let's take it to more of a gray tone. Um, not quite 50% gray, maybe like a 25% gray tone. And I'm gonna hit okay, and then okay on that layer style. So you can see over here, we have a little eyeball next to our color overlay. I can turn that color overlay on and off by clicking on that eyeball and you'll see that we have now a darker rectangle. And this is actually gonna be like our color control. All that we have left to add are three different filter effects. The first one we're gonna add is by going up to filter and then down to filter gallery. All three of them are gonna be in filter gallery. I'm gonna minimize this. So you see you have all these folders here of different filters and effects. I'm gonna go down to texture and texturizer. And then over here in the texture dropdown, we have it set as canvas. I'm gonna change that to sandstone. I think it's got kind of a more grainy effect. Now if I zoom out on this, I can click over here and kind of drag around and preview it. And I can use my command minus and plus to zoom in and out. 
It actually does a pretty decent job. The one thing here, if I scale this up, you'll begin to notice, or maybe if I scale it down and then uh, turn the relief up, you can see just how patterned this effect is. And so we're gonna apply some other effects to get rid of that patterning. I'm gonna turn scaling to 100. This is mostly so you guys can really see the effect, but I'm probably gonna create this a little bit more intense than what it should be for real paper texture. And I'm gonna take relief down to, oh, we'll take it down to five maybe. And that looks pretty good. The light will keep on top and we will not invert it. So just keep that unchecked and we'll hit okay. So from here we ha we're starting to get a texture, but we need to add some more filters to really randomize this texture. So let's go back up to filter, down to filter gallery. Don't hit this first one, that's gonna reapply the filter you applied before. So hit this second one here, this filter gallery, and that's gonna open up the filter gallery again. I'm gonna zoom out on our, our previous selection. And right now it has that texturizer selected again and it's showing it doubled up. I don't want that. I'm gonna just uh, go up here to brush strokes and then we're gonna click on splatter. And that's gonna create a much more randomized effect. So let's go ahead and turn up smoothness maybe to 15, which I think is the max. And actually spray radius at 10 looks pretty decent here. So I'm gonna hit okay. Honestly, if you wanted to play around with the effects at this point, you've really got yourself a pretty decent paper texture. I mean, because paper textures come in all shapes and sizes. If you want to add a little bit more of like the fibrous textures in there, I would recommend going back up to filter, adding a third filter to our, our layer here, uh, down to filter gallery. Instead of splatter, I'm going to click on sprayed strokes. And then we can adjust the stroke length and the spray radius and that's going to create that more fibrous type texture in our paper and you see all the different i mean it, it this almost looks like you know how recycled paper looks where it has the little um, black dots in it and different you know you see all the fibers and, and the particles and that make up that paper texture i'm going to go ahead and click ok on that one and now we've got a really really cool paper texture if you start to mess with this color overlay by double clicking on it and uh, clicking on our swatch here, you can start to create uh, different colors here and see how that texture affects them. You can adjust this to your liking. So I'm gonna hit okay, go out of that. And right now I'd say we have kind of like a, it's borderline construction paper texture. So how can I apply this to my design? Right now, if you minimize all these effects, you have this rectangle here. I'm gonna use the selection tool um, or the move tool to uh, move this around, but essentially I can actually move this rectangle around, right? So you could cut it up and, and splice it together and use it in different pieces and parts in different areas, or um, let's say you wanted to apply this texture to some text, right? I'm gonna go ahead and hold option and duplicate this layer. So we've got that rectangle below it. This one below it, I'm gonna call, how about white paper? and this one we'll call uh, blue paper. And this white paper, I'm gonna hide the blue paper for a second. This white paper we need to adjust and actually change the color and get rid of all the blue and make it more of a white piece of paper. I hit okay to that, hit okay. Looks good to me. So now we have this blue paper over the top of our white paper. In between those two, I'm gonna add a text layer by clicking on the text tool over here in the toolbar and then clicking on my canvas. And let's just say we're gonna add the word paper. I'm gonna click back on the selection tool and then I'm gonna use Command A to select all. You can also go up to select and then down to, down to select all. From here, now that I have the selection tool selected and I have my paper layer selected, I'm gonna use my horizontal and vertical align uh, to center commands. I'm gonna use Command D to deselect all and that's also up here. You can do uh, deselect, it's the second option down. Command T to transform, and I'm gonna hold Shift and Option to transform proportionally from the center, just to kind of scale this up. And then to commit that, I'm just gonna hit Enter. From here, I'm gonna reshow this uh, blue paper layer. And all I need to do now is hold Option between those two layers. You'll get this sort of drop down squ arrow square uh, icon, and that's to create a clipping mask. So if I click on that, I've created now a clipping mask where the blue paper only shows where our text layer exists or whatever layer below it exists. 
and because we've just typed out the word paper, that's where the blue paper shows. So I can actually, that's still editable. So I could take that and we could change that to the word texture. And you can see how that, that paper textures inside of there. Right now it looks like it's see-through to the bottom, but how about we just go ahead and add a drop shadow to this. So we'll double click in this texture area, go down to, where's my drop shadow? If you don't see your drop shadow on here, you can always go down to effects and then add a drop shadow. And from here, we can kind of preview what it looks like. I'm gonna increase the size of this, we'll increase the distance a little bit, and then maybe the opacity some, and we'll hit okay. On this white paper down here, I'm actually gonna to go to the filter gallery for the bottom layer, right? Because if we turn that on and off, it's really gonna get rid of all of our texture. So I'll turn that back on. I'm gonna to go to this icon here, and that, if I double click on that, that's gonna pull up my blending options. I'm gonna be able to change the mode um, and the opacity. So I'm gonna adjust the opacity of this maybe down 50%. And I'm gonna hit okay. So that has created l less of a, I guess less of a strong texture in the background and then allowed our paper texture on our letters to stand out. I think this drop shadow is a little overpowering now, so why don't we go ahead and turn that down to maybe 50% and we'll bring the size down a little bit. And maybe we'll go back down to 25%. So anyway, that's how you can also apply the paper texture to other things and use it in your designs. Um, I hope you guys learned a bunch in this tutorial. I know I kind of rambled on here and there, but if you learned anything like this, if you have any questions or suggestions, post them in the comment section down below. Check out the rest of the channel and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.